Good morning, grandchildren and my friends from afar. Look what a great and beautiful day the Lord has blessed us with out here today. Man, it is nice and uh, sunny and cool. A beautiful, uh, I don't know if we're in fall yet, what time of year it is, but it's a beautiful fallish morning. Uh, today, we're going to take a look at uh, chapter 4. And this is a, an incredibly interesting and a beautiful um, chapter here. Let's clip on our safety belt, shall we? Dear Lord in heaven, please watch over us, Father, as we read through these scriptures. Help us receive that which you would have us receive, Father, day by day, every day. Help us become that which you would have us become, Father, day by day, every day. We love you, Father. We need you. Um, amen. Well, that being said, Nebuchadnezzar the king unto all peoples, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth. Peace be multiplied unto you. Now, one thing that uh, this chapter doesn't start out saying, that this is Nebuchadnezzar's. He's written a decree here, or maybe not a decree, but he's written out a letter. He's experienced something. He's an old man at this point, and he has uh, experienced uh, a phase in his life that he wants to uh, inform the world about. And uh, really, it's a, a warning. And this thing has a lot of layers. I had to, I had to, uh, I had to read a few more books and receive some helps. Uh, and this uh, learned about the uh, something called the Hanging Gardens from that book there that he uh, he uh, he made. And I thought that was very interesting. If you ever uh, get a little times. So, uh, Type in uh, uh, the Hanging Gardens of Nebuchadnezzar and do a Google image on that. Look at those beautiful paintings. of uh, And uh, it uh, had my, my wheels turning a little bit thinking about this story here, how that the gardens of uh, the Hanging Gardens might have related to this story. And thought it good to show the signs and wonders of the high God. Now here we see we we got him down as a capital G God, right? Uh, but we're fixing to enter into a part of the story where he's not going to be so much using this this capital G, but a small G. But at this point, when he's writing of this uh, parchment, this paper, uh, conveying this story to us, the peoples of the world, uh, the high God hath wrought toward me. How great are his signs, and how mighty are his wonders. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and his dominion is from generation to generation. Uh, like uh, most kingdoms that die out with generations, you may, uh, like we, some of us just remember our queen, or a queen died in England, well, for a generation she was queen. Well, now that that generation is is passing on, she dies, and now you have a new king in place. Well, unlike the true God of Israel, this this guy, his dominion runs from generation to generation, on down through time. Nebuchadnezzar was at rest. Now he's telling the story. I, Nebuchadnezzar, was at rest in mine house, and flourishing in my palace. I saw a dream which made me afraid, and the thought upon my bed and the vision of my head troubled me. Now, you always hear me talking about carnality. This whole book is about to get us to separate from our carnal thoughts of what this Word of God means so that we can receive it in our hearts, our spiritual being. And here we have specific mention of his head. His head troubled him. This is our brain. This is our. This is where all this carnal comes from, and he's fixing to receive the uh, uh, the the La Grande of Grande lessons about being carnal. Therefore, made I a decree to bring in all the wise men of Babylon. Sounds familiar? This is kind of like the story that uh, which became uh, Daniel. Um, acquainted with uh, with Nebuchadnezzar, but this is another dream later in life. Uh, uh, he bringing all the wise men of Babylon before me, 
that they might make known unto me the interpretation of the dream. He's trying to get somebody to answer, to find out what this dream means. Then came in the magicians and the astrologers, same old gang here, and the Chaldeans and the soothsayers. And I told the dream before them, just like he did time before. But they did not make known unto me the interpretation thereof. Um, but at the last, Daniel came in before me, whose name was Belteshazzar, according to the name of my God. Now back at this time, we were back using that small g God, and uh, he named Daniel after that. Uh, he named all of those young boys, gave them all uh, 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 Babylon, Babylonian names. <coughs> In whom is the spirit of the holy gods. Now here's that small g again. This sort ought of to tell you where Nebuchadnezzar's mind's at. His, not, his mind is in the carnal. And how this relates to us is today we have a lot of small g gods in our lives today. They can be sports, entertainment, or who we look to for uh, to, to save the world, be it uh, Apple or a computer or a medical science or whoever. We make our small g gods. We've got a lot of them, just like he did. And what we should be understanding is this story is our own story. All of these stories are our own story, by the way. And before him, I told the dream, saying, O Belteshazzar, master of the magicians. He doesn't call him uh, servant of the Most High God, does he? Again, this tells you where his mind is at. He's still thinking that uh, Daniel, even after all he's witnessed with the furnace and those, uh, the Son of God being in there with him and everything, he's, he's still backslid. And this is a problem with most of us on this earth. We have a nasty tendency to backslide, even when the God has shown us good miracle. Like say, uh, let's, to give you an example, let's say we've got a drinking problem or a dope problem or something, and uh, we get to read in the Bible, and the good Lord delivers us from that uh, drug or that booze or whatever our problem is. And uh, some time may go by, and we may backslide right back into it. We may forget the great helps that we receive and the great inspirations we receive from this Word of God. And we might drift back toward the, the world and the carnal ways of thinking of it. And this is what uh, uh, Nebuchadnezzar is showing he's done here. Uh, Belts are master musicians because I know that the spirit of the holy gods are in thee and no secret troubleth thee. Tell me the vision of my dream that I have seen and the interpretation thereof. He's asking, uh, he's asking Belteshazzar, not Daniel, who is the same people in his eye. We got to learn to see Daniel and not Belteshazzar. We got to learn to look with our spiritual, our heart of who Daniel is and not Belteshazzar, some made up conception that we have in our minds uh, from reading the Bible carnally. We need to read this Bible with our hearts. Praise God. Amen. Thus were the visions of my head. Again, here's that head in my bed. This is a state of slumber, a state of being asleep. This is what we are when we're in the carnal. We're all in a state of sleep. We're sleepwalking. We're not yet awake. I saw and behold a tree in the midst of the earth. And the height thereof was great. Um, the tree grew and was strong. And the height thereof reached unto the heaven. And the, uh, the sight thereof to the ends of all the earth. It's like the imagination itself. This is, uh, this tree is covering the earth. And leaves thereof were fair, and the fruit thereof much. And in it was meat for all. The beast of the field uh, had shadow under it. And the fowls of the heaven dwelt in the burrows thereof, and all flesh was fed of it. Uh, we're talking about this uh, carnal state of being, uh, this tree. This is our carnal conception. 
Uh, look what the world has built. Look at the wonders the world has, uh, has achieved uh, thus far. This tree is growing. This carnal world is a huge monolithic uh, uh, thing. And uh, it has is, it is surely spread its branches. And now in the spiritual term, this is our carnal understanding of the Bible. Uh, we can read this Bible from beginning to end. We can be able to quote the numbers, chapters, and verses. And we can still be this tree. And a matter of fact, we need to think of it as that in that terms. For this story to, uh, to manifest. I saw in the visions of my head upon my bed, and behold, a watcher and an holy one came down from heaven. This is important. Make a note of this in your mind. This is a watcher. And a holy one came down from heaven. He cried aloud and said thus, Hew down the tree and cut off his branches. Shake off his leaves and scatter his fruit. Let the beast get away from under it and the fowls from his branches. There's a fall coming here, isn't it? Nevertheless, uh, leave the stump of his root in the earth, even with a band of iron and brass in the tender grass of the field. All of these have spiritual significance. Sharpen up and take them in, absorb them. If you don't get them spiritually, just hang on to them. They will manifest in time. And let it be wet with the dew of heaven. And let his portion be with the beast and the grass of the earth. Let his heart be changed from man's, and let a beast's heart be given unto him. And let seven times pass over him. This matter is by the decree of the watchers and the uh, demand of by the word of the Holy One, the Holy Ones, uh, to the intent that the living may know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth it to whomsoever he will. Hang in there. Don't get bored. Hang in there. And setteth up over the beast of men or the beast of men. Or is that beast? My, uh, I got brain fog this morning, so you might have to... Is that word beast or besessed? I'm not sure. Uh, this dream I, King Nebuchadnezzar, have seen. Now thou, O Belteshazzar, declare the interpretation thereof far so much as all the wise men of my kingdom are not able to make known unto me the interpretation uh, but thou art able, for the spirit of the holy gods are in thee. What has he forgotten here? Remember he, before he proclaimed that the God of heavens was the God of gods and king of kings? And now he's lumping, even by name, calling him Belteshazzar instead of calling him Daniel, his God-given uh, holy name. He's calling him uh, Belteshazzar. This is speaking to us who has received some spiritual information, received some spiritual revelation, but yet reach back into that carnal way of being and uh, start to lose that spiritual reaching. Uh, then Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar, was astonished for one hour. Now, this uh, had a Pacific meaning because as he's fixing to see that this is the king's story, Daniel here, uh, uh, Belteshazzar going to think he's afraid to give him the truth or give him the interpretation. But what Daniel here is realizing in this moment is what he is, what and who he is, because Daniel plays a part in this dream just as uh, uh, the king is playing the part of... Uh, uh, this tree. Let's read on, but hang on to that. And Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar, was 
uh, as, as, that's not astonished, that's atoned for uh, one hour, and his thoughts troubled him. And the king spake and said, Belteshazzar, let not the dream or the interpretation thereof trouble thee. Belteshazzar answered and said, My lord, the dream be to them that hate thee. He's saying, uh, if this dream was only to them that hate thee, and the interpretation thereof to thine enemies. Uh, but it's not. It's to him. <clears throat> There's a fall coming. And uh, old Daniel, he saw it right off the cuff. The tree that thou sawest, which grew and was strong, was the height that reached unto the heavens, and the sight thereof to all the earth whose leaves were fair, and the fruit thereof much, and in it was meat for all, under which the beast of the field <coughs> dwelt, <coughs> and upon whose branches, <coughs> upon whose branches the fowls of the heavens hid the, had their inhabitation, it is thou, O king, and art grown, that art grown and become strong, for thy greatness is grown and reaches unto the heavens. This old king represents our carnal. Our carnal is reaching up to the heavens. It does through prayer every day. Our carnal is reaching for a heavenly thing. This is why there is awakening coming. This is why help is on the way. Reaches to the heavens and thy dominion to the ends of the earth. As whereas the king saw a watcher and a holy one, this is what shook up uh, Daniel a while ago, he's seeing himself here. Whereas the king saw a watcher and an holy one coming down from heaven. What do you think is running through Daniel's mind now as he's revealing this uh, to the tree, to Nebuchadnezzar, and saying, you the tree down and destroy it. Yet leave the stump of the roots uh, thereof in the earth, even with a band of iron and brass in the tender grass of the field. This stump, we have to go here in this part of this uh, story. Uh, I wrote the mark to a tree. Uh, um, this is Matthew Henry's, uh, he quotes a, a Job, uh, looks like uh, 14, I think that is, uh, nine, uh, 7, 9. He says, there is hope of a tree, if it is cut down, that it will sprout again, uh, that through the scent of water, it will bud this tree is going to bud again. Let me see if I can remember where I was. Uh, cut down from heaven, saying, Lord, cut it down and destroy it. The tree and stump and the roots thereof, of the, uh, of the earth, even with a band of iron and brass and the tender grass of the field, and it uh, let be wet with the dew of heavens, and let his portion be with the beast of the field, till seven times pass over him. This old tree is cut down and left as a stump with the tender grass of which the people are. And uh, the, uh, there's a band of steel and brass that's binded up this stump. That rod of uh, Jesus Christ, uh, that revelation of Jesus Christ, it is that band. This revelation of Jesus Christ uh, is what's going to cause this tree to bud out again. And you are uh, playing the part of Nebuchadnezzar in this world when you are in a carnal way of thinking. We are all going to play all the parts of this Bible. One day, one way or another, we are going to experience every character in this Bible. And we are, when we are in that carnal frame of mind of uh, reading and understanding this Word of God in the carnal, we're a tree that we might have risen to the heights. Think about of all these uh, TV preachers. 
that owns billions of dollars worth of, of kingdoms and their churches cover the earth and their branches and all these people, the birds of the fowls of the earth and the wild animals, the people that are looking for God that don't have the spirit of the Lord in them. They're coming to hide up under their branches in this carnal world. Uh, this tree is going to be cut down. This carnal way of thinking is going to be cut down. Help is on the way. Its name is the revelation of Jesus Christ. Praise God. Amen. This is the interpretation, O King. And this is the, the decree of the Most High, which is come upon my Lord, the King. That's the revelation of Jesus Christ. When it comes upon you, that is the Most High. This is when our hearts say, oh, this is what this means. I get it. Not the brain, but the heart. Boy, was my brain wrong about that. Men like Hitler and, and uh, men like uh, General Armstrong Custer, they, they came to that point somewhere in their lives where they say, boy, was I wrong. Man, did I do a disservice to my God that I thought he wanted me to do this thing, which was my carnal understanding that my brain, my own conception, <clears throat> all along, God was talking to me in the spirit. But I wouldn't open up and hear it. I could only hear the brain. Uh, that they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beast of the field. He's losing everything here. And they shall make thee to eat grass as an oxen, and then shall wet thee with the dew of heavens. Think about them, uh, those, the dew of heavens uh, raining down on that old stump there that's, uh, that's got the hope that it's going to sprout again with the scent of waters. Remember that? Uh, and let that permeate in your, in your heart. Seven times shall pass over thee till thou uh, shall know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdoms of men. Everything that happens, no matter who's the king of men, whether it be Donald Trump, whether it be, uh, whether it be, uh, what's the old guy that uh, is holding it now? The uh, uh, Joe Biden, I call him Joe Obama, and uh, or, or Kumala, no matter who's in these seats of these kingdoms of this earth, it's in God's hands. And whatever we're bringing, bring to whatever point that God is bringing us is so that our stump, can sprout again. Sometimes there's need to cut down the tree because the tree is wrong. And uh, the tree will grow back. And when it grows back, with the help of the Lord and the dew and those bands around that trunk of that tree, it's going to grow back straight and tall and proper. That's the spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. Amen. The kingdom of men. And giveth unto whomsoever he will. Whatever happens is in God's will. We have to remind ourselves that as we watch uh, this election in our country and the elections in all countries around the world. We have to remind ourselves that everything that happens in this world, it's the God of heaven, the Most High. He is in charge. And if you don't like the way things are going in your uh, carnal kingdom, then come on over to the spiritual kingdom. The water's fine. Everything is great there. Praise God. Amen. And whereas they commanded to leave the stump of the tree roots, thy kingdom shall be sure unto thee, after that thou shalt have known that the kingdoms, that, that the uh, heavens do rule. Uh, the heaven is in charge, uh, not the carnal man. He's just playing out the parts. Wherefore, O king, let my counsel be acceptable unto thee and break off thy sins. He's now these two guys are kind of friends toward each other. They're both getting up in years. They're both old. They've seen a lot of history uh, flow between them. And they are they, these guys are kind of affectionate toward one another. And he's appealing. Daniel's appealing to this old man at this point. Uh, he wants him to break off of his sins. You know what it takes a, a, a subject to say that to a king who has the power to lop off his head? This shows great faith in Daniel. And he is conveying the message the good Lord wants him to hear. 
He's playing the part of that watcher. He realizes he is a watcher sent down from heaven, no less, to send this message into this old boy who's uh, playing the part of the king, Nebuchadnezzar, by righteousness and thine iniquities, by showing mercy to the poor. If it be, what did Jesus tell us about the poor? Show mercies to the poor. He was all about the poor. And that was his favorite people. This is poor in spirit. If it may be a lengthening of thy uh, tranquility. He's saying, you might have a chance. Turn around and maybe this won't happen. Turn away from your sins. All this came upon the king Nebuchadnezzar. And the end of the 12 months. Well, he, could, he probably was showing mercy and doing pretty good. And a year later, what's he do? He walked in the palace on the kingdom of Babylon. Now, some people depictate him as walking up on the rooftop and where he's looking down on Babylon. And he, uh, the king spake and said, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for my house of the kingdom by the might of my power? This is one of the most dangerous things that a preacher man can do is act like he's got sprung privy to some information that he it's his it belongs to him completely leaving out the fact that it is the inspiration of the holy spirit that revelation of jesus christ he's only the mouthpiece this has been the doom of so many uh, powerful preachers and teachers on this earth look at this kingdom that i have built through my power they say and for the honor of my majesty. Many of these old boys of these big powerful churches are riding around in jet aeroplanes and, and uh, riding around in limousines and, and uh, they got uh, palaces and houses from one end of the country to the other and even as far over as many places of the world. Looking down on this great uh, metropolis they've built, this spiritual metropolis, their church. This is not the way to go, my friend. You got to always give God his props, his proper respects. We must always signify that anything good comes out of your mouth. It's from God himself. It is not yours. While the word was in the king's, while the word was in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven saying, O king Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken. The kingdom is departed from thee. And they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beast of the field. Going back to the old carnal rewards. They shall make thee to eat grass as an oxen, and seven times shall pass over thee until thou knowest the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men. And giveth it whomsoever he will. He's remembering the words of his old friend Daniel, isn't he? And that same hour was the thing fulfilled upon Nebuchadnezzar, that he was driven from men, and did eat grass of the oxen, as an oxen, and the body was and his body was wet with dew from heaven. Now, this is going to grow that old root from that chopped down tree. And his hairs were grown like eagle's feathers. Somewhere in this Old Testament, it talks about these eagle feathers, that when you come to the Lord Jesus Christ, they grow every year. You get them brand new and new. That's why an eagle looks brand new. He sheds those old feathers, that plumage, and he receives them new every year. And his uh, grown like eagle's feathers, and his nails like bird's claws, like an eagle. And uh, at the end of the days, Nebuchadnezzar lifted up mine eyes into heaven. Now, a beast of the field, like an ox, he generally looks down as he is eating. And we're eating what? The Word of God. So as we're, it, he coming to a point where it, it used to, he'd look down at the earth, the carnal way. Now we're coming to a point where he's looking up. His eyes are what? They're lifted up. Lifted up mine eyes into heaven. This is that revelation of Jesus Christ, praise God, amen, and mine understanding return unto me, and I bless the Most High, 
Remember Nebuchadnezzar, he saw the spirit of the Lord when those boys were in that furnace. And he declared, Nebuchadnezzar, he declared that uh, God was the most high. Well, he lost all that because he backslid. He started getting carnal again, just like this carnal world wants to hold you to it. It wants you to go to those big, fancy, nice churches because they have a nice, comfy feeling inside and everybody's all uh, hunky-dory and feeling good, but the only one problem is nobody's reading the Word of God. They're all making each other feel good. This is, that, this is what the carnal, uh, the carnal kingdom can do for you. You can make your body, your flesh feel good but it doesn't feed your soul. So now, the Most High, and I praised and honored Him. Now that this revelation of Jesus Christ is coming on Him, He's getting His strength back. He's becoming uh, a changed being. That old stump that He is, which was now a great tree that covered the earth, that fed people carnal wisdom and carnal understanding, they're going to wake up and He's going to grow new sprouts, new buds. And there's going to come spiritual understanding. Praise God. Amen. And honored him that liveth forever, whose dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom is from generation to generation. This God lives forever. Not like his own kingdom of Nebuchadnezzar, which is fleeting. Now he's looking to the, to the heavens. He's looking to the Lord Jesus Christ. Though he didn't know who Jesus Christ was at that point because he didn't, Jesus wasn't born yet on the cross. But that ghost, that Holy Ghost, is the same. Jesus was there in the beginning. He's here now, and he's there in the end. And all the inhabitants of the earth are uh, reputed as nothing. And he doeth according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth. And none can stay uh, his hand, or stay unto him, what doeth, uh, what, uh, say it to him, what doeth thou? We can't question God with our own carnal understanding. It is a failure. This is where we fall. We have to let God in his divinity take charge in our lives and do what God says and not question God. Praise God. Amen. Which is what the carnal does all the time. Questioning what does this book mean? This is how Hitler and Arnold, General Armstrong Custer got into trouble. They kept questioning, what did God mean here? Let's see, God is telling me here that the Jews are bad people because they put Jesus on the cross. I know, I'll just eradicate them. I'll just create some concentration camps, and I'll get rid of these people, and I'll be a soldier of God. That's what Hitler's brain was telling him. That's what his carnal understanding invested into him. Confusion. He didn't let this word speak to his heart using love for his filter. He used carnal understanding. It's a dangerous proposition. That tree will be hewn down in time, my friend. And the same time, my reason return unto me. Let that reason return unto you, that reason of love and hope and glory and peace. And for the glory of my kingdom, mine honor, my brightness returned unto me. And my counselors and my Lord sought unto me, and I was established in my kingdom, and excellent majesty was added unto me. This is going to happen to your life, except when that majesty and that kingdom comes back, it's going to be of the bud of a new sprout from that old tree stump that you hewn down, and that you start rethinking this Bible. And start letting it speak love and mercy and kindness. All the attributes that Jesus brought us on this earth. This is where that new bud is going to sprout from. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the King of heaven. All whose works are truth and his ways judgment. And those that walk in pride he is able to abase. Praise God. Amen. I believe that was the last of that chapter. Let's see if I was at the top of that page. Now I'm going to skim over some of these notes. And I know a lot of people that are kind enough to stay this long in these studies often turn that, turn that uh, video off at this point. Uh, but uh, if, you, if, you, if you can, if you have time, when this camera gets still, 
you can pause that video uh, and you can read these notes to see what my friend Matthew Henry has to say about the, this chapter we just read. And Matthew's Henry's notes always furthers our spiritual discernment and understanding. Why? Because he was a man who experienced that revelation of Jesus Christ you always hear me talking about. That revelation of Jesus Christ, that, that uh, moment in time when we say, it's an aha moment. A dear friend of mine tried to explain this to me. We come to an aha moment when, you know, we come and we say, man, this thing was more easier than I thought. I've been looking so hard trying to see something with my brain, trying to figure out the ins and the outs. And at some point, you just get to where you could laugh at everything you've done, trying to figure out what it was God wanted of you. When it's it's plain as the nose on your face, but we can't see it because of the carnal nature. God is after love. He is after uh, holiness. He is after peace. He's after fairness. Now, none of these things are derived from the brain. They all come from the heart. And this man here has uh, experienced this aha moment. So many of the things that he says in his... Uh, dissertations here I'll call it is a, a great help to one's spiritual awakening uh, remember Nebuchadnezzar had this story that came to him while he was on his bed and in his head this was a dream and this is a this is a his a spiritual awakening we just witnessed what God uh, allowed him to go through and so that he could uh, come to this spiritual awakening to realize that uh, it ain't all about the carnal world. It's about the recognition of a spiritual God. I know I've been bringing up Hitler so much it's driving you crazy, but it, to me it's one of the best models that I can think of. This man read the Bible, but he only consumed it in the carnal. And it destroyed not only his life, but countless uh, hundreds of thousands of other people's lives were, uh, were adversely affected by his understanding of the Bible. And, uh, and uh, General Armstrong Custer, same thing. Uh, these guys uh, read the Bible, the many, many people in our history. We're suffered with this in this earth. We read the Bible and reach out for God in the carnal and we do a lot of harm to each other. Jesus was the anticipus, I think is the right word for that. He was the direct opposite of that. Jesus understood these scriptures in the heart. He understood these scriptures with love. And uh, when we do that, that's the key. That can open doors that nobody can shut and shut doors that nobody can open. That key opens up these locked seals within the... And the, the old book of Revelations talks about. To have those seals unlocked now means you can have understanding of these scriptures that many men failed to receive because they were locked out of it. Why? Because they were reading it with their carnal minds and not their spiritual hearts. So the lock is ours and the key is ours too if we want it. And all we have to do is unlock our minds and let our old brains rest so that our hearts can start taking up that walk to Jesus Christ. Praise God, amen. If you've enjoyed this study, come on back and study with us again sometimes. My grandchildren, I, it's my fervent hopes and prayers that you guys later in life uh, get turned on to the Spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ and you start seeking uh, this marvelous, miraculous, uh, uh, what you call it when something metaphors, this... Uh, 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 I can't think of the word. You fill it in for me. This metamorphic state that we're all turning in from those caterpillars into those beautiful butterflies through this milk that flows through this precious breast, the Old Testament and the New Testament, that gives our spiritual uh, being growth, uh, our substance that we grow from. I hope you guys are being turned on to that, and I hope you're finding some help in these videos to help you get there. I love you. And uh, the good Lord loves you. Don't ever forget that. That's why I read these uh, old stories to you. Because uh, within these old stories is everything we need in this world. 
to get off of this rock and to get back into our heavenly state to be with our Father. And we don't have to die to have that. You can have that right now. You can have your peace on this earth now today. Don't have to wait till you're dead and judged to have heaven or hell. We can have heaven or hell right here on this earth. If you don't believe you can have hell, just uh, turn on your YouTubes and do some uh, researches for these great cities of ours that once were great are now being uh, uh, filled with zombies and the walking dead and uh, people that live under the sewage systems of these cities. Uh, see what this world is. Uh, it, there's a hell on this earth, my friend. And this Bible, this word, this angel sent from heaven, it can save you from these horrible things. Never look down on these people because we are these people. We play both sides of this coin. Before we receive this word, we are the ones in the underworld. Don't kid ourselves. We're, we, we play both sides of this coin. I love you. I hope you have a great day. I don't know how long this video is going to be. It's probably longer than it should have been. But the old man's getting old and long-winded. Uh, stay well, my friends, and have a wonderful day. And I hope everybody uh, uh, finds some peace and healing. And uh, come on back and read with us again sometimes, won't you? Uh, praise God uh, for the day, every day, good or bad. Every day is a good day if we're reading in the, the Scriptures. But uh, not everybody's afforded another day, my friend. So praise God for the day. Uh, I love you. Hang in there, and we'll talk to you again sometime.